All right, all right, all right. It's mini day, and you know what that means? It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a damn good time, okay? Because this car might be mini, but it is massive as far as its impact in the automotive world, all right? You're looking at the second most influential vehicle of the 20th century. That's kind of a big deal, yes? Number one best-selling car in Great Britain. Oh, that, I'm, yeah, UK basically is what I'm trying to say. But there's a lot of good stuff coming out of there. That's impressive. And some would also say that this car defined an era. Yeah, we would say that. So let's go ahead, uh, take a look around. I'm really gonna enjoy talking to you about this Mini, showing you this Mini, and then driving this Mini, because I'm allowed to drive this car. And I haven't driven this car since I was 16, so uh, one could only say I've gotten better and more responsible. All right, let's take a look around it, shall we? started to be an idea that might be turned into this rocking car. Well, around the time that the Suez, was, Suez crisis was happening, not a lot of people were having fun and not a lot of people were getting access to gas. So, you can imagine uh, the people wanted gas-efficient vehicles, small economical vehicles, just like this one. And uh, usually when that's happening, car manufacturers will listen. Now also, my favorite thing, and probably most importantly, Leonard Lord at BMC freaking hated German bubble cars. It's funny, because like, I love German bubble cars, like Messerschmitt, BMW Isetta, Corbin Sparrow, all that. Is Corbin Sparrow from Germany? I don't know. Somebody tell me in the comments. I'm not, I, not off the top of my head. I don't know. Anyways, Leonard Lord was like, I can't stand these German bubble cars. And he said, you know what, Sir Alec Isigones, could you just do me a big favor? Come out with a car of specific measurements, and by that I mean 10 feet long, four feet wide, four feet high, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, Sir Alec Isigones said, I got you, buddy, right on it. And he was right on it, because he was able to design and develop the Mini within two years, okay? It uh, debuted in 1959. Oh, I love it when I get a number that's not coming to my head immediately. It uh, debuted in 1959. It was the, what, the, I'm gonna, the Mini, Morris Minor, and then the Austin 7. It would later in a few years become just the Mini Marquis that we all know and love. And, uh, Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior because it's kind of interesting. And let's do that. All right, so, of course, classic Mini exterior. The interesting thing about the Mini is that it wasn't built like most vehicles at the time. It wasn't on an assembly line, okay? It was made, uh, it was built and welded on jigs. And uh, you can see the uh, trademark exterior weld right here. Now, a fun way to tell if you have like a really early on Mini that you're looking at is that you'll see ex visible exterior door handles, which there's none right there, okay? Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say about the exterior. Now, we're going to look at the interior. But before then, let's point out just how preciously goofy this cartoon-themed paint job is. I can tell you that we did not do this. We bought it like this. So, let's look at the interior, so, shall we? So, you can tell, this is mighty roomy. I mean, like, I'm a 5'7", and uh, I got plenty of space right here. Dance around, move, jiggle, jank, whatever. Now, 80% of the Mini was dedicated to the passenger, which is pretty freaking impressive. I don't, I don't know what 
current percentages are dedicated to the passenger, but it doesn't feel like that much. So you can see there's plenty of space for the back and genuinely nice dash. I mean, that's kind of freaking beautiful, frankly. And of course, these compartments were supposed to be able to fit one bottle of Gordon's gin, of course, that Surreali is going as his tops, and then one bottle of vermouth so that he could make his, uh, I shouldn't do that hand gesture, so that he could make his dry martini. That's why I like Sir Alec Isikonis. That, I mean, obviously he was a top-notch talent and genius for his time, but now you've seen the interior. I can't really think of anything else to show you. I mean, very minimalist door handles and of course, um, crank windows, not a big deal. Now, let's go ahead and look at the engine, shall we? you just looked at was a little bit of automotive design history and not just a little bit I mean a lot of bad bit a lot of awesome bit okay so Alec Zygonis was like oh you know what we really need some space yeah we could use more space how are we gonna do that transverse engine boom put that thing in in a different way all right I mean you might not think that's too innovative but it was freaking innovative at the time so Transverse engine, boom. Gearbox underneath the engine, pow. Front wheel drive, whoop, whoop. Yeah, that makes this a extremely fun drive, if I do say so myself. And that's why my hair is a mess, is because I was just driving it all around town with the windows down. And it was the shit, okay. So, uh, it's actually really impressive when you dive deep into, and I can't say this, say all the engineering feats that Alice Akizo Izigones did off the top of my head because I don't have any of this written down right in front of me, so there's that. Uh, but this car was pretty truly remarkable in design and it's just awesome. Now let's go ahead and move on to uh, some of the random facts and then talking about some of their epic race wins, which was kind of cool and John Cooper's involved of F1 fame and glory. Ah! All right, let's start doing that. Let's go ahead and just uh, cut in the middle with some fun stuff, all right? Me driving this fun little go-kart all around downtown Corpus Christi like a Jason Bourne or the female equivalent of Jason Bourne. I don't know, whatever. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Company was like, you know what? We gotta get our hands on one of those. And they did. And they completely disassembled this bad boy in hopes of them creating an alternative, a successful alternative. I mean, I guess we kind of know that that didn't work out. No, it didn't. No. So let's go ahead and talk about the minis Monte Carlo Rally 
wins, all right? Now, the first part, or the first one they entered, they did not start off strong, but they started off quite reliably as far as handling went. So they were like, yeah. They're like, man, we just don't have enough oomph. And they didn't. So they had a very low hoist, oh, ho God bless. Did I just say hoist power? Horse power. Lord, I'm tired. So anyways, they had a very low horsepower. And they're like, golly, you know what? We really need somebody that's good at going fast. Who do we go to? Cooper. Mm. Cooper of the F1 fame, okay? He's mighty legendary. I can't even go into it right now. So they got Cooper over there. And you know what he did? He like really nailed it, okay? Bumped up the horsepower. I don't remember what to exactly what that horsepower, I don't remember how, I don't remember. Anyways, we'll go on. Sometimes I remember numbers and sometimes I don't. So Cooper got involved and you know what they started doing? Winning, yes, yes they did. So they won three times, okay? Should have been four, but some kind of disqualification, including like a, I don't know, a headlight, light bulb, I don't remember specifically. Anyways, and that was, uh, I feel like they won 64, 65, disqualified 66, and then won again in 67. I feel like it. I don't know. Complain about it in the comments if, you, if I get it wrong. I'm kidding. Don't do that. I don't care. So, I think that what we've done is uh, talked about the Mini, and I don't have anything else to say. I mean, I'll probably think of something else that I considered mighty important and then I forgot about it, but that's how my life goes. Yeah. So let's go. Oh, yeah, there was something quite important. If you like this car, you should go to Worldwide Auctioneers and register to bid on it. We are having it at the Corpus Christi Old Car Museum. This is a car that has been in my family for probably 20 years, maybe just under that, but yeah, like for a quite a long time. And uh, we've always treated it well, like we treat all of our cars. And let's go ahead and cheers, shall we? Oh, it tastes so good. Mm. Oh, I'm a little dizzy. 